Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is Alex, yes, and this is The Ramble, and we go until midnight tonight from New York, New York. That uh, guy over there, who's taking up most of the uh, picture, uh, <laughs> is Chuck Farnham. Yeah, every time we do a thing with Chuck Farnham, you probably get the feeling we're talking with somebody who's a deadhead or a Grateful Dead guy, because you look like that. And I've seen a lot of Grateful Dead shows. Have, have There's you, that problem, too. Did you do that? Um, Europe, Alaska, all over the country. Yeah. What was it about them? I never really got into them. Uh, here, I'll give, I can give you the story about how it happened to me. Mm -hmm. 1978. Yeah, I was in I was in Mountain View, California, buying tickets to see Neil Young uh, record uh, "Rust Never Sleeps" at the Cow Palace. Mm -hmm. I'm in line. There's a whole bunch of people behind me, mm -hmm. a whole bunch of people in front of me, and the guy in front of me goes, "You're here for debt tickets?" I'm like, no, I'm here for Neil Young tickets. And he goes, "No, the debt are coming back from Egypt." And they're going to play five nights at Winterland, and you got to go. <laughs> and I go, you know. How old were you? How old were you at this point? Uh, probably 22. Oh, maybe. okay. All right. Okay. 20, maybe. <laughs> and I go, dude, I only know one song, Truckin'. And I really don't, I really don't care. And he goes, no, 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 you got to go. You got to go. And the mm -hmm. line just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah. And I go, and he goes, no, you got to go. You got to go. This is going to be just unbelievable. I'm like, I go, okay, what show should I go to if I'm going to do this? And he goes, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, dude. Wait a minute, who is this I guy? One, is... I know one song. Are they going to do this song five nights in a row? Uh, you know, and he goes, oh, no, no, no. You should just go. I'm like, Wait okay. a minute, now this is just... And anybody who you're talking to? This is a rando in front of me buying, and I'm buying Neil Young tickets, and he and his little troop of hippies are, are very excited the dead are doing Five Nights at Winterland. Mm -hmm. So finally I go, okay, dude, you must, there was somebody here must know something. Yeah. I'll buy one ticket. He goes, Thursday. You want to go on Thursday night? I'm like, okay, I'm going to buy two tickets to Thursday night. So I buy the two tickets. I, I take a friend with me, and he didn't really know the Grateful Dead either. And we were kind of close, but down front. And it appeared to us, as we were sitting there, I, I kind of tap him and I go, because we didn't know any of the music, and God knows they're not going to play trucking. Um, I go, are you seeing this? And he goes, these people all look like they're floating. I mean, you, you, you know, and I go in front of the band, they all look like they were levitating. And and he goes, yeah, I see that too. And I go, what the hell is this? And he goes, I don't, I don't know. I go, I, and I'm like, I have no idea either. And we kept doing this and kept staring at this thing. And by the show's over, we go home and we tell everybody that we went to the Scrapple Dead show and we watch people levitate which was in, it was October 21st, 1978. Fine. Come February, the, the dead are going to play in San Jose at Spartan Stadium. And we have told everybody now about this fantastic floating band that we, you know, <laughs> that we saw. <laughs> and so I got now, now we have like 15 people that actually bought tickets based on our little story with us at Spartan Stadium. And uh, Charlie Daniels was the only guy. Those guy. were in the days when we believed in levitation. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So so I'm there. I'm minding my own business. They did an entire entire show of basically country western music. 
Big River, Johnny Cash, Merle, you know, mm -hmm. all the big hits. While all these people looked at us and said, what did you see again? <laughs> and, went, and then the guy was up, he goes, no, 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 they were levitating. I'm telling you, they were levitating. And I go, they were levitating. And everybody went, well, you know, nice little country afternoon with Charlie Daniels and the Grateful Dead doing Johnny Cash covers. Okay. I get home, I call the guy, because I got his number. The guy was in mm -hmm. front of me uh, buying those first tickets. And I go, what the hell was that? First I see him levitating, now I'm in a country show. And he goes, that's why I told you to buy all the, all the shows. You never know. Some suck, some don't. And I go, you gotta be kidding me. This is how this works. And he goes, they have no set list. It's whatever they feel like they're gonna do. And at that point, I said, okay, I'm not going to miss one of these again, and I'm going to figure out this whole thing. And I saw them over a thousand times. And it's still what it was back then. It reminds well, you of what was this? Night. What was this levitating? I don't know. It's like, the it's like, you know, and it'll sound weird. It's like the the band plays the music and the music plays the band and the audience is some kind of weird interaction with that and you see this thing happening did other people and, see in the other performances did you ever see the levitation again oh yeah yeah it 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 you know when it's a good one it's a really good one when it's a bad one it's a really bad one i i i took the wife um she had never seen him before we were at shoreline and we were sitting there, and before the show started, everybody stood up at the same time. And there was no key to this. The lights didn't go down, nothing like that. Mm -hmm. She's sitting, still sitting down, and I'm standing up. And then the music starts, and everybody starts dancing exactly the same way. And she looks over at me and goes, where did you guys all learn this dance? How can everybody in a room... It's, it's like ballroom dancing and everybody's doing the cha-cha here or something. You people are all dancing exactly alike. And I go, yeah, it just kind of happens. It's a, I've taken many people, many people understand it, many people don't understand it. It, it It's like going to your high school reunion. Well, you see it was thing. like going to your high school reunion because most of them are dead now, right? Well, he, and they're not grateful. Kind of the they're same. not grateful yeah, for it. They're less grateful than they used to be. But it turns out that it wasn't really the band; it was the music, because there are over six hundred um, uh, cover bands, or six hundred Grateful Dead cover bands floating around this country right now. And the last one that went around here sold out stadiums. They're not even the band, and they're they selling don't out. Ca they don't care if they're dead. No, no, it's about the music because the music seems to treat everybody the same way. It's like it just never, it just never, it never like, grabbed me. I tried, I tried to like it, you know. I tried yeah. to get into it, but never, I, maybe because I never went to a concert. Yeah, I mean the records suck. Nobody will tell you that the Grateful Dead ever made a decent record. They're bad. Yeah, but but they had that's why make... the last the last few records they recorded they recorded at Marin Civic. And um, they recorded them in the dark at the Civic Center, like there was a you know non-existent audience there. And those sound better, but they still suck. That's why you have people with thousands of hours of tape and serious. Well, they examiner. used to. The, they were the one band that allowed people to bring tape recorders and actually put them on stage to record the concert. Yeah, we we plugged into the um, soundboard out um, in the audience. I got pictures. We. I used to record a lot of shows, so yeah, it, it, and I still, I, they did three nights in San Francisco in October or in uh, July, and I was out I there. never even liked trucking. I know. I I don't understand it. It's a weird thing. You really need to, once you sit there, you, I think you and I sitting there at a show, we'd probably go, oh yeah, this makes some sense. There's a band out now, I'm trying to remember their names now, that have that same kind of loyalty. Fish. Fish. Yeah. I don't see I don't like fish at all. But the other band that's just like this is uh Jimmy Jimmy Buffett. The parrothead people. Mm -hmm. 
those guys. Oh my god! And and the weird. But thing, that that one I really can't understand. It's very because I but, not only don't understand it, I don't like Jimmy Buffett's music. Oh, you didn't? I, yeah, I like a couple of them, but his shows were very dead. Like I saw him twice. And his shows are very dead. Like, and he actually did Grateful Dead songs during them too. Oh, so really? it was, you know. And does the weird. audience levitate at a Jimmy Buff? Well, he, they, no, he, no, he, they were like older and drunk. They those guys drink margaritas, a lot of margaritas, <laughs> a lot of margaritas. So, yeah. So I'm, you know, in between Grateful Dead thingies. And the nice part now is when they do those shows wherever they, you know, or these cover bands do the shows, uh, nugs.net, you, you don't have to leave the house. I can get them satellited in here. Like Weir is doing stuff with the symphony now and some things. I can get that via satellite so I don't have to even go outside. Do you have a satellite dish? Uh, they do it. They they bring in a whole No, do crew. you? Do you have a satellite dish? Mm, not in, yeah, not in this house, no. What do you mean not in this house? Well, the previous house had a 12-footer. That house in San Jose had a 12-foot dish. There was a time where if you had a dish, I'm, I'm not talking about dish or... Um, uh, oh, no, no, uh, no. It's, direct TV. Uh, I'm talking about a satellite dish. You could yeah, pick up any number of things. Like, I we had, used to uh, watch a whole week as they were feeding the stations. We would watch a whole week of, uh, of, Jeop of, of Jeopardy. Or you could watch the news in between the news. Yeah. It was well, funny. I was. I mean, I, but I, Jeopardy, they would send them all down, and then what no. I would do, I, I lived, I was hanging out with a girlfriend, who lived up in Sebastopol, and I would, uh, what we would watch all of these, and then when I came back to San Francisco, I'd invite people over to watch Jeopardy with me, and I'd answer all the questions. Of course you could. Yeah, nice. No, we had a, a twelve foot dish there in San Jose, and you could watch um, Letterman uh, uh, on the live feed to mm -hmm. the East Coast. You could watch all that stuff. Funny thing, uh, a couple weeks ago, I had to go to this conference in San Ramon, and I'm having breakfast, and the guy next to me, it was a you know, very friendly thing, and the guy next to me starts talking to me. He used to work, he was the VP of sales for Chaparral, who created those boxes that allowed you to watch that stuff, or, like via satellite. So I had a chaparral box in my house. And the guy goes, I used to work for a chaparral. And I'm like, oh my God. So me and him are rambling on about this and how to pirate the stuff off the box. And well, I'll tell good. you, if people think that they have a lot of fun watching YouTube. Oh yeah. Uh, satellite dishes were the original YouTube. Yeah, they really were. Because you would go surfing through the satellite dish and then you find something one day we found something so bizarre that we were just gobsmacked by it. And that was a channel for, I believe, people who were uh, involved in uh, 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 autopsies. Yeah. And it was an autopsy channel. Yeah, it was like... And, well, and you sit there and watch them hacking people up. Hospitals would, you know, teaching hospitals would send stuff from like Harvard to Stanford and the doctors would be in Stanford watching autopsies and you could dial into that channel and watch that too. It right. Was, Everything was available and they didn't, they didn't oh, scramble any of it. No. And they had a zillion, um, radio channels too. You could get a separate box for just radio signals and listen to millions of different radio channels all over the world. There was a time though when I could go online and I believe it was Broadcast.com, which was owned by yeah, yeah. Mark Cuban. That's how Mark Cuban made his original yeah. billions, because he sold it off to, I think it was Yahoo or somebody like that, and then it didn't work for them, but they had their $5 billion that they were paid for it. And that's how right. he became a billionaire. And uh, that channel that used to have a lot of foreign channels. You could listen to radio from all over the world. It was yeah. like shortwave, um, you know, back in the 70s. Almost. Yeah, yeah, but you could hear it clear, and it was like the... Yeah. And uh, that was his big thing, broadcast.com, but what happened was is a lot of these outfits said, oh, wait a minute, we don't want you pirating our signal, you know. Right. So then it didn't become worth it to Yahoo to pay all these people 
for the rights to their signal. So, and yeah. now they're they're sliding stuff around now where with with we had the dish, we didn't have to watch commercials either. That was our thing. Right, right. But there was two minutes worth of silence, however. Exactly. And, well, but during that two minutes of silence, maybe you saw Brokaw. Uh, drinking coffee and farting, and, you yeah. know, doing the doing the stuff that you re- made him look like a real person. Yeah, don't you wish you had that footage today? Yeah, it's probably around somewhere. Mm. Like the old uh, what a buddy Rich yelling at the guy to get off the band because he had a get out of the bus because he had a beard. You know, we had all that stuff way back in the day, and now you find it on YouTube. Yeah, I was just looking at my watch because every now and then it buzzes my hand. Yeah. And uh, then it's, uh, it's breaking news, so I got to look at it because it might be something important. And then important, it isn't. really? I can't imagine that in the news. And then it isn't. Okay. So. I just shake my head. I watch the news, and I'm like, uh, yeah. But uh, my new watch. Oh, you got a new one? Got I the, got a- I got the Ultra. This Ooh. is this is the best Apple Watch I, they ever made. I got the high end Apple phone the other day. Oh, really? I'm waiting. Oh, yeah. I'm waiting because I'm expecting an influx of money, and when that happens, I'm just going to buy the phone outright. I'm not going to pay for it in payments. You know. Yeah. It well here you like this. Why I have the new watch or why the phone is even worse. So my parents got themselves hooked up in a uh, geriatric trial for some. How, how old are they? How, because you're not, you're no well, youngster. Um, um, my stepdad is um, 67. My, my mom Wait is. Wait a minute, how uh, old are you? 65. So he's, your stepfather is two years older than you are. We went to high school together. Oh gosh, I remember that now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we, only, only with Chuck Farnham would that happen. Yeah, it's it's a weird week. So anyway, they're involved in this program through some pharmaceutical company. You go to this hidden building, and you go in there, and they inject, I don't know, licorice into your eye or something. It's some eye thing. Anyway, I did take my mom there a week ago. A week ago Thursday. Mm-hmm. Everything's fine. Somehow, my phone doesn't get out of the building. For whatever reason, it's now locked in this compound in the middle of Nevada. Mm-hmm. And then the day after we were there, which would be a week from me yesterday, is to, would be tomorrow, is a thing called Nevada Day, which is a rare occurrence in this planet, where they celebrate becoming a state like no other state does. They shut I'm down the remember, entire state. I'm trying to remember. They they were pretty much. They were right, but weren't they right before Arizona in becoming a state? I think so. Yeah. 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 Well, they shut down the whole state every year and have a big parade. And I don't remember that. Hookers. I lived in Nevada. I don't remember that. Hookers, guns. It's crazy. Well, the hookers part I like. Yeah. Well, they sh- they shut down this building and they're not taking phone calls. And well, I'm like, I wonder oh, if there well, any. Yeah. I wonder if there are any hookers with guns. Maybe. Yeah. Well, the gun guys are usually right behind the hooker parade. Oh, okay. So it's like hooker parade float gun guy. So we might say that the the gun guys are rear ending the hooker float. Kind of. Yeah. And the horses are up front because the gun guys aren't carrying guns; they're shooting them. <laughs> Real guns. They're shooting yeah. them. Oh yeah. He, you know, there's that old thing. Forty guys I, dressed in red, all shoot guns. I watch these guys in Muslim countries who are really happy, and then they shoot their guns up in the air. Yeah. Well, don't those bullets come back down? They do. There's a thing called gravity. Yeah, and is it is it is the propulsion as fast as the propulsion going up? No, I guess not. No, no, probably not. So people don't get hurt by the bullets coming down. I don't know. You get hit in the head from something that's hundreds of feet in the air, I would think that would hurt. Do they shoot them straight up or do they shoot them at an no, angle? No, shooting them out would make sense. When you see them, they're always shooting them like fireworks, straight yeah, up. Straight up, oh God, because then they come straight down. Right. It's not good. It's not bright. No, no, no. So, my phone is stuck in this building for six days, because they're not open on the weekend. 
blah, blah, blah. Finally, I show up, get the phone. The phone's older, and it's kind of not working as well as it could, so I went in to get... Hold on, hold on a second. See, this guy, I knew this guy would call me. Oh, God. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So, I got the new Apple phone. It's a... was a very reasonable seventeen hundred dollars. Seventeen hundred dollars for a telephone. Seventeen hundred? Yeah. Why? Those things. You have are, to ask, um, you know, which one did you get? Which one did you get? It's a fifteen Pro Max with a oh, terabyte. Oh, Max. Ring. You mean the one, the largest size phone they've got? It's a yeah, but it's not that big. It's about the same size as my other one. Let's hold it up. Uh, t- let me see the screen. See, uh, turn it the other way. Huh. Because uh, here's mine, my current one. How does that yeah. look to you? What's the camera look like? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, but... Uh, it, Probably a 14 I think or something. maybe the larger one, but 1,700. Those These phones, I think, go for about 1,100, 1,200 now. The, 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 the Pro, not the Max. Right. <clears throat> does, it, does it fit it, in your pocket okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it'll uh, it'll also do, if I got no cell service, it will do um, uh, satellite communication. Mm-hmm. So I can send, you know, I can send an SOS to um, uh, AAA and, you know, get my car fixed. I think this, is, this has so, some something satellite-based. See, this watch is like a sports watch that they have. But it's, it's 49 millimeters as opposed to 46 millimeter. Right, so it I have has a bigger. A, it has a larger landscape on it, and it makes it easier for me to read at my age. You know, I've got the the Model Three, but I I rarely wear the thing. I needed it because I didn't have a phone. Oh, and it does yours work as a telephone as well? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I have yeah, an yeah, yeah. AT and I like account. that. That feature was good. Well, what happens is the other day I left the apartment. I, I forgot my phone, and then I went. I don't need it. No, no. If I, you know. it, like my phone just rang there, but it also rang on my watch. And if you you can text people on the watch, really nicely because it's got a um, a microphone, mm-hmm. and so you just dictate whatever. I dictate I, I, if I if I send you a, a reply, I dictate right. it. I mean, sometimes yeah. it looks a little garbled when you read it, but who cares, you know? Yeah, and that's been pretty good. They've got that kind of figured out, but. Well, I do remember the days when, like, with, uh, I remember Apple had the Newton, and they tried to have right. vo- voice recognition, and it took forever. 795, that thing. It took forever for that phone to understand what you were saying. Yeah. You know, it never worked. Finally, yeah. now they've got dictation down. They figured it out. You, you, you dictate a couple of things so the phone gets to know your voice, you know, and it's doing everything. It's good. Yeah. You know? I agree. I like it a lot. But, man, so I've been running back and forth to the hospital is where I've been. Oh, boy. Yeah. it. You know, I got two calls this morning, uh, and I discovered, you know, I didn't think it was going to be a bother, but I had to be the guy who said yes to the DNR. Oh, boy. And I... I fell apart. I, I, I mean, I've known the guy fifty years, right? My stepdad was in the hospital. The guy that was in high school with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've known the guy fifty years. I think we had one argument in fifty years. And he's so and I he's di- he's basically he's dying. Yeah, I don't like using the word, but you know, um, he's back in. He's been in and out of hospitals for the last three weeks. And by in and out, I mean in a hospital, mm-hmm. into another hospital, into another hospital. And his oxygen level this morning was is not good. He keeps trying to pull the thing off. They um, put him in restraints so he wouldn't pull the oxygen off. It is getting depressing. It, it, dude, you ought to be me. You ought to be trying to do anything and have a phone call about about that it's I, I, you know it's horrible the whole thing is horrible it's really horrible for him or you know maybe he doesn't feel that I don't know I, I've talked to him 
he's not communicating at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, this morning they rolled him back in. Apparently there's a spot in ICU that I haven't been to. They have an ICU for ICU. Wow. Hey, listen, we got to go. Yeah. We'll talk more yeah. about this. That was, that was. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Oh, boy. Thank you very much, Chuck. The reason it ended so abruptly. Here, here's what I did today. You know, Popst is just not doing things great now, you know. So I do the interview with him. And I'm like... 23 minutes into it, right? And I, all of a sudden, I, I look and I see that I wasn't recording it. I was putting it up live. <laughs> yes, I was putting it up live. So, uh, <laughs> so I then, after the show, I went to uh, uh, YouTube. And by hook or crook, I had to do a few things because it wasn't easy to do. I downloaded the little video, but apparently it ended before it was completely finished. I mean, just you, you missed like three seconds or something, you know, but that was why that was that way. Okay, so, so anyway, um, but I, I was so proud of myself though, I fixed, I fixed the problem. That was what was so great. Anyway, what am I doing here? Let me see here. Let me have some coffee. This is not very good coffee. What it is, it's latte. They make a latte that you can make in your Keurig. And I thought, oh, you know, okay, why not? You know, and then the answer is, no, not why not? <laughs> you know, it's just not that terrific. So anyway, um, uh, it's, uh, uh, you know, but we got a bunch of people uh, who are. Well, let me take it first. Yeah. Hmm. Is it any good? Yeah, it tastes okay. It's just a, It's just not coffee. Coffee, you know. It's not strong. I like strong coffee. Like, yeah, I like coffee. Like I like my women strong and black. No. Uh, anyway, let me see here. Are there people waiting to come on to this program? Yes, there are. And let me um, bring them on here and see how they're doing. Oh wow, we got we got a lot. Of, we got a, we got a good a healthy amount to start with. Okay, um, Jeff is looking for his audio. There he is, and he found it. You're good. You're fine. Don't don't touch a thing, hey, Jeff. Don't touch a thing. <laughs> you know. So anyway, how are you all doing tonight? Let me. Well, pretty good. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a little. Uh, as always, I'm always tired. I don't know. Why I'm tired. Maybe I, I, I w- tend to wake up as the show goes on. You know, mm-hmm. so that's that's a hint that you know that it invigorates me. But waiting for it makes me bored. Uh, <laughs> it's weird being the same age as old people. You've had that one on before. Yeah. Is that for my benefit? That's for my benefit. For your benefit. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's uh, it's kind of strange that I'm waking up every morning in bed next to a woman who kind of starting to look like my mother. <laughs> you know, because she's like, she tomorrow, birthday, big birthday tomorrow, major yeah. birthday for her tomorrow. She's going to be 100. No, she's going to be... <laughs> <She's not. laughs> Better clarify that. <laughs> You're in trouble. <laughs> she's going to be 80. She's going to be 80. I still go out with younger women. You ready for that? Right? Yeah. Yeah. So she's anyway. She's a good-looking babe. Hmm? So that's... Yeah. She's okay, you know. Um, I, I see her getting older, okay? And she sees me getting older. But it isn't nice that we can see each other getting older. You know, it's a mm. sweet thing. Hey, uh, uh, Kevin, I saw another one of your videos up the other night. And I, oh yeah, last week. And I think it was a recent one. Is there a recent? Yeah, one probably last week. It was yeah, out, they had their. Uh, we had our home show here. I did for the kids. Out on the field. Yep. Yep. If you yes. get a chance, go on to YouTube and look up. Uh, 
um, Kevin Stopper. And uh, watch the videos of these kids, you know. I mean, some of it's, some of the, it, it, it's not that the music is great, but it's the fact that this is the beginning of their musical lives, you know. Yep. And they're learning how to work and blend together as an orchestra, which is a, is a very difficult thing to do. I don't think I've ever heard, if you, Kevin, have you ever heard a, a group of musicians that young all playing together that aren't a little off key or a little you know you know what i'm talking about but there's um, a, there's yeah a, there's there's some that are off key and there's some that are pretty damn good too really there's yeah. a lot of them that like these middle school some of these middle schools are really hardcore and we've got a group down here uh, well the cmeas are the um they're the uh top end and my daughter used to get taken into those and they're they're the uh, uh what do they call it i gotta remember what the cmea stands for but it's the they have to audition to get into this and it's a group of schools like between you know the area but i know these guys don't but san juan uh san luis obispo mm -hmm. up to santa cruz yeah and they pick out you know a group of kids and they all audition you know, online so they or get, whatever. So they, they get the best of the best. They get the best of the best, yeah, and then they practice yeah. for two days, and then they do a two-day concert mm -hmm. or one-day concert, and it, it, it sounds amazing. Well, online, I mean, not, and, and I don't know why it is uh, that there are so many of them online, but there are a lot of schools that are doing, as a school musical, yeah. the producers. Yeah. And they do it from beginning to end. I mean, you know, nothing, yeah. you know. And but the music has a little bit to be desired. The singing is great, you know, but the music is a little off. Yeah, and yeah. It's, well, they're, it's you that, know, they're learning. It, yeah, it's that learning off. You know? <clears throat> mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. sure there's a point at which people, well, people who aren't going to be musicians don't become musicians. Right. You and, know, and you can hear them get better too. Yeah. Well, you know, when I, they start, I, it's really pretty sour. <laughs> well, my you know, my father, my, my father was a professional musician. Didn't start well, playing. The, progress, didn't yeah. start yeah. playing. I think the violin till he was twenty, if you can imagine that, yeah. because usually uh, that's a, the, the violin is an instrument. You really should start teaching a kid at say, you know, that, <laughs> no, no, yeah. it, about about five years, six years, you start them, because it's a facility that has to be, yeah. you know. I, yeah, Sarah started piano at. Uh, we started her at four. Yeah, see? That's what I'm talking about. And Be the piano is like a stepping stone to everything. Once you learn piano, you can kind of grab onto just about everything. Once you learn theory and all that. Well, yeah, but I think that if you're <laughs> going to play something like a trumpet, you need to have an embouchure, you know, it's, which is a, it's the it's, way your mouth forms and so on. Yeah, well, you figure that out later. But, I mean, when we, gave, when we bought her uh, a saxophone, Mm -hmm. uh, we, you know, we. She said she wanted to play the sax. Did you change and, your name? To, <clears throat> did you chase it? Change your name to Lisa? Yeah, right. But um, I thought to play the sax in a school band in high school. Yeah. Yeah. She yeah. went from piano to sax, and mm -hmm. we said, okay, well, you're going to get serious. We're going to go to do this slowly, mm -hmm. and we rented one, and we were going to rent it for two weeks, mm -hmm. see how she did, and we rented it, and. She went up into her bedroom, and next thing you know, we're hearing "Happy Birthday." We're hearing this. We're hearing actual <laughs> songs coming out of the room. I'm going. Wait a minute! You just got this thing. She goes, "Yeah." I said, "Okay, well." And then two weeks later, I'm on Amazon buying a three hundred dollars sax because I'm not going to rent it forever as long as she's doing it. And yeah, then well, she did, got but, into but it. She, but she had also played the piano before that. You say she played the piano from four from four years old so all the that, way up to, this was until middle school, like yeah. the beginning of middle school, sixth but, grade. But this was like a stepping stone. The piano yeah. is a stepping stone to everything else. Yeah. Right. It's the theory, you know, the, the musical theory. You yeah. learn all the theory and how to read the music and, you know, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, flats mm -hmm. and sharps and all that. And, the, you know, how to actually read the music. And then you can kind of pick up things after that. I mean, one time she picked up a... Um, a bassoon in the sixth grade and started playing that wow 
yeah it was it was crazy i'm going what else can you do and then she bought a ukulele one day and well, it always, it always up, amazed didn't take me. On to that very much. I but. think my father started playing the violin at about twenty, maybe nineteen, and he became yeah. a very accomplished. He was a became a very accomplished journeyman musician. Now, if people don't know what I'm talking about, a journeyman musician is one who can pick up the music, put it in front of him, and then play it. Yeah, with great. Well, with, and that's what they do. I mean, yeah. she gets into. She was going to uh you know she would go to a class or they would go to a group of musicians and they would just play yeah and you get handed music like she would go to the saxophone christmas every year that was that's her thing that she does every year mm -hmm. third saturday every year they get 300 saxophones together these people have never played together they huh. you know never don't know each other. They sit in a room for two hours, and then we go to the mall, and we go to um, uh, what is it? A mall and a, a shopping center and a an outdoor venue, and they all play, and they play great. I mean, it that sounds awesome. It sounds like your daughter's on her way to a career in music. Well, she's playing. She's playing in the Oregon. Uh, Oregon University of Oregon marching band right now. And what's she playing? Here this weekend. Wow, yeah. What's she playing with sax. That? sax? Wow. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to go see her this weekend up in Eugene. The Cal game. Isn't that terrific? Isn't yeah, it's, terrific? it's exciting because <laughs> I, I love it. I think that, you know, I mean, I grew up in a musical. You can see her there. I don't tape those. They get those professionally taped. <laughs> <laughs> I, I when I, yeah, they get on TV <laughs> is what they're, they do. They get as a matter on TV. of fact, you know what they're doing is they're doing the Metallica challenge. So Metallica released all their rights to their music to the high schools and the uh, and the college hmm. marching bands. Wow! They let them do their music for free, and then I guess towards the end of the year or sometime in the next year, they're going to pick colleges or high schools to play with them in a in a venue or on an album wow yeah so that would be cool because if you've seen them some of these bands some of these bands do that and they did it with an orchestra last year i think or the year before mm. well you know i'll tell you something folks the best thing you can do for your kid is to teach them music you know it it it, it um increases their grade point average it's proven that it increases their grade point average it increases their their uh time management skills their it it does all kinds well, my of my father stuff. was There's always hoping that I, it was always hoping kind of that i would go into music and yeah uh, and i just never did i mean he taught me he put me i went i don't I can't tell you how many instruments i went through trying to learn something or to grab hmm. something that i really found interesting i mean i was always very musical yeah uh but i wasn't uh uh uh, I, I was too lazy, all right? Yeah. Because, That's you know, my, my, yeah, my, it, my father tried to get me to learn the violin. I got tired of holding it under my chin. You know, I just got, oh, boy, here it is, it's under my chin. I didn't like that. And I also, my father had calluses on his neck from all the year yeah. playing the violin. I said, I don't want one of those. So then what, the one, another thing, then he, then he said, well, what instrument would you like to try? And I don't know why I said it, but I said the trombone. <laughs> so That's hard. So he found me somebody, because, you know, he was in bands. He had friends who were musicians who could teach me, right? Yep. <laughs> so he found me somebody to teach me trombone. You know what I like best about playing the trombone? The spit valve. <laughs> <laughs> It's pretty nasty I, when you get I, going. The, 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 well. the, 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 yeah, no, but the incentive, no, it just it was a little flip thing. Yeah. Uh, but the incentive for me to play the trombone was to play it enough that it got enough spit that I could open the spit valve and a bunch of it would Let come it out. Drool out, yeah. 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 Always, yeah. You always got to so clean gross. it afterwards, too. <laughs> So needless to say, to stick in there and needless to say, that instrument didn't work for me. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, what else? Did, were there other instruments he 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 put me through? He didn't want to push me because he figured if I wasn't going to play music, I wasn't going to play music. But I was very musical. That's the funny part about it. 
So, uh, I mean, you could, you know, you could hum a note to me and I'd hum it right back to you in perfect key and things like that, you know, and, and uh, uh, I never had a problem that way. I never had a problem. I had a problem reading music. That all seemed like yeah. garbage on the page to me, yeah. you know. How anybody can turn this into music was amazing yeah. to me. <clears throat> but then, uh, I, so I didn't, he, he quit trying to get me to learn something. And I started, uh, I started playing the piano, uh, a rock and roll kind of Jerry Lee Lewis style piano, mm -hmm. but I started playing piano. Not great, but playing it enough that I had a little band and everything. Yeah. You know, but that didn't last long either because there was no spit valve. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, mean, uh, I thought about trying to learn to play the piano. I played guitar for mm -hmm. a while while but it was never it never progressed well everybody you know, wants I, to everybody wants to play guitar because they think so yeah they, they think it'll get them laid nah. i tried didn't work <laughs> didn't work <laughs> you, 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 i got so far and then you get you got to get deep into it and you got to constantly be doing it constantly yeah. be doing it mm -hmm. jeff yeah i i played guitar when i was a teenager and i gave it up because that was okay but i was mediocre and I knew I was going to, I knew I would never be great. Okay. But my son, Andrew, he started playing uh, instruments. And uh, what was it? What uh, Alex's dad used to play? Violin. Violin. So Andrew started playing a violin. Hmm. And I said to Pam, I said, you can't have a kid playing a violin. When he grows up, they're going to want to beat him up instead. Yeah. I said, you got to get him a guitar well, or there's a couple of problems with the violin. First problem is when they decide that they can't hire a full group of mu musicians, instead of hiring an orchestra, they hire a band. And, and a band, the and band has no string instruments. Well, it has probably, you know, uh, something like, you could consider the piano a stringed instrument, actually. But I mean, well, uh, bass. Uh, uh, yeah, bass. Yeah, you'd have that. Uh, but uh, a bass can be upstaged by a tuba, believe it or not. You know. Ooh. So, but anyway, um, so I, I just never, you know, I. And it's funny because all the effort that I didn't want to put into music, I then put into the things I did in broadcasting or in video or whatever. Mm -hmm. I learned incredible amounts of things that I, I mean, like, look at me doing this right now, yeah. you know, I, I had no problem learning this because I had a fascination with it. Yeah. So, uh, but, uh, but there was a lazy part of me that just not would allow me to play an instrument. So yeah. I never did. And my father one day said, look, you never played an instrument. I thought that was going to bother me, but you play a turntable better than anybody I know, <laughs> you know, and he considered the fact that I was successful in broadcasting to be where it all came out. You know, it didn't come out as a musician, but it came out as an entertainer. So, um, right. you know, I... Well, she I, found a, a camaraderie with the with the band people, and that's that helped too. You know, there was a bunch of people, a bunch of friends, and and they all hung out at the band room when they got... When she had in-between classes, she would go down there, and her friends would help mm -hmm. her with schoolwork, and then they'd play music. And mm -hmm. it was just something that, you know, something that happens, and then... And you know it, it's good. Well, did it's you ever good. did you ever see that movie that Jack Nicholson made? I'm trying to remember. It's like the second film, big film he made, uh, where he played, grew up, and he had a, he was born in, into a musical family. No, uh, I think I know it. Five easy pieces. Five right? easy pieces, right? Yeah, because I remember that one. Yeah, and and it. and it was a but he was born into a musical family, but he didn't play music and he didn't want to play music and he was kind of the outsider in the family. That's exactly <clears throat> my life story because almost yeah. the, the Schwarzman family in San Francisco were the premier musicians in San Francisco. My aunt was a harpist, my uncle was a pianist, my father was a violinist, his... Uh, uh, and uh, there's always a singer in there somewhere, probably. No, no well, yes, well, actually, no. My we had my, I had a cousin who was a pianist, who was a concert pianist, uh, but he wasn't on the Schwarzman side. He was on my mother's side, and then he had a wife 
who was a a, 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 a soprano, a concert uh, singer. Yeah, there you go. An opera singer. Uh, and so all these musicians all around me. And when we would go to parties, you know, people would say to this little kid, so what instrument do you play? Yeah. <laughs> you felt like an outcast. And I, well, uh, I said something spoons? like... Spoons? <laughs> I wasn't old Boy enough. Boy says an instrument. Come on. If yeah. I wasn't old enough, but I probably would have said my penis. You know, I mean... <laughs> Uh, it, it, it plays the radio, but no, there was an expectation that I was going to be a musician, and I thought right. I was always letting my father down, who I worshipped, you know. But mm -hmm. he always encouraged me. He said, "You've gone into radio. You do it really well, you know." He said, "I'm very proud of you." He said, "You found your your instrument, right. mm -hmm. you know," and and I think that, and as I say, the kind of effort I put into playing that instrument was every bit as much the kind of hard work I would have put into playing a violin or a trumpet, a trumpet or whatever. Yeah. But anyway, if you're going to teach your kid a, 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 an instrument, uh, make sure it's anything with a spit valve. Okay. <laughs> well, we, we know a guy, uh, Nick, who plays in San Francisco uh, on the trombone. Mm -hmm. In, uh, in San Francisco, I guess they have one place that's the, the classical, uh, the whole band. There must be a place in San Francisco that that, yeah. that performs there, and that's where he that's where he works. That's where he My plays. father played with dance bands, but then he turned around and he played with the San Francisco Symphony, and then he turned around yeah. and he played with a, an orchestra at one of the Broadway shows that would come to town. You know, he he was he was just a guy. He threw the music in front of him and he played it. That was it. You know, yeah. he knew. But times changed, and they went to combos instead of uh, orchestras. And when that happened, there was no work for violinists anymore. So he went into real estate. You know, <laughs> and towards the end of his life, he went back to music in a way because he became a a uh, work for the musicians' union as a, uh, uh, what do you, I forget what they call them now, but they would go out to all the different clubs and make sure the musicians were being treated well. And uh, uh, he, uh, he enjoyed that a lot because he got to mentor a lot, of mu a lot of musicians. And there was this one kid that he told me about that he heard at the, because they gave him, see, because he was a, the newest guy, they gave him all the, the clubs like the Fillmore and the Matrix, and there was one of the Avalon was another one, because none of the other guys wanted to work with these young kids who were playing rock and roll and things like that. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, in order to get into the musicians' union in those days, you used to have to be able to read music. Uh, I know it sounds strange that that should be the major requirement, but a union's main job to the employer is to say that you're hiring competent people who know how to do the skills like that. And he ran into this guitar player who was phenomenal, but he couldn't read music. And he said, I can't get, I can't get into a lot of the big places. And he said, my father said, why? He said, because I don't play music. So he took this yeah. kid to the musician's union and said, you should let this guy join the Musicians' Union. He said, well, let's hear him play. And let's, let's, hear him, let's see how well he reads music. He says, he doesn't read music. He said, well, then he can't join the Musicians' Union. He said, wait till you hear him play. And he had him play for these guys. And they were all blown away by him. And they gave him his card. He became a member of the Musicians' Union. Uh, Jimi Hendrix didn't read music. Yeah. Well, yeah, my father, I mean, my really father, great. my father got them to break the major rule. Okay, mm -hmm. um, uh, and I see your hand raised. I get to you in a second, Tom. Um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, he uh, he got this kid into the musicians' union, and that kid uh, later on became famous. Um, now, now I forgot his name. Oh, Steve man. Miller. Steve Miller. You know the story. <laughs> oh. It was Steve Miller. That's what I'm raising my hand about. Yeah, it was Steve. That's right. It was Steve Miller. Wow. Uh, and um, when my father died, my mother got a very nice letter from Steve 
saying, if it weren't for your father, I never would have made it in this business. You know, and I, 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 it made me feel really good because at that time I was playing Steve Miller's music on the radio, you know. And uh, so thank you for reminding me of my own life, Tom, because I've keep, <laughs> I keep forgetting it. <laughs> Well, I had them. I Matter had them. of fact, I remember him talking about that, but he didn't mention any names. But he did talk about not being able to read music, and it was in an interview not, not but a couple of months ago, maybe a month or two ago. Actually, yeah. that's that's what I wanted to say. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. Uh, it was on KPFA. Uh, Tom Azzolini, who does the uh, yeah, Saturday maybe that's Morning Blue Show, he had a two-part interview with uh, Steve Miller from several decades ago, and I forget who the interview was with. But one of the things that I thought was interesting the interview was, was when he was really, really little, uh, his family knew Les Paul. Mm -hmm. And so so, so Steve Miller's uh, mentor was Les Paul. Wow. Did you remember hearing that? No, I didn't. I, I, no, I didn't, about, Kevin. No, I didn't hear that, but... Um... It was a it was a more recent interview because he was he was in the area not too long ago. Uh, I saw him at uh, amphitheater probably two years ago, year and a half, two years ago, mm -hmm. over at Shoreline. But it was between then and now that I heard the uh, the interview. Yeah, yeah. I just where recorded where interview from. I, I, don't I don't know how long ago, but it was a. Uh, but uh, Tom Azzolini on KPFA did a two parts. Uh, and I said that was several months ago, but it was a great interview. I really was fascinated. Well, you know, yeah. I mean, it, it, it got to the point now where, you know, all musicians don't, in fact, uh, who was it? Glenn Campbell didn't know how to read music. And he played with the, you know, with what they called the, uh, What's that? Oh, a gr gr bunch of uh, Grand Opry? No, no, no. no, no. The, the, uh, the, wrecking, the Wrecking Crew. Wrecking Crew. Yeah, they yeah. were the guys who were on almost every hit record. Didn't uh, they, even if it was a Beach Boys record, they were playing the music for the Beach Boys. You know, yeah. didn't Jerry Lee Beatles. Lewis also say he didn't know I thought, how to read music? I, I, that I don't know. I would imagine he didn't. He didn't have to. He kind of made up he his was own. Kind of a, he was kind of a banger too. Yeah, he was kind of a banger, but. I mean, it was interesting that, um, uh, you know, that, that these people, uh, a lot of them didn't know how to read music. And, uh, but the Musicians Union by that time had changed their rules. And so as long as you could go down to the Musicians Union, sit there and show them that you could play, then they, because, also because a lot of the people that were playing music who they wanted to keep in the union uh, were these punk kids, you know. So, and some of them could play. I mean, they read. There was no problem with that. But they didn't want to be that impediment for somebody to be kept out of the union. So, anyway, <laughs> on the other hand, I think my union has gotten a deal yet. I think the strike's going to go on till after the first of the year because they say they're going to stop talking at the end of this week. And it's it's horrible. Elvis Presley couldn't read music. Yeah, but he didn't. Play. Maybe that's what I was thinking. He about. really he really didn't play much. Yeah. You know? Michael Jackson, Eric Clapton. Oh yeah. Hey. Oh yeah, that's right. Eric Clapton too. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know something. I think in a way that and most of them were blues because blues it, is just a EAG type. Well, thing. I think also there was a there was a great deal of of of. of um, work that went into this by them to learn music without having to read music it allowed the them allowed yeah. them to create their own style you know and mm -hmm. uh, that uh, that makes a big difference and the style was a, was a big deal uh, and and it, you know they sometimes if you're if you're taught music in a certain way or you're taught something and you just work within what you were taught. You're never going to grow and become yeah, special. Yeah, forced into a you're forced into a box. Yeah, you're forced into a box. So what happened when these people did no longer they could belong to the musicians union, but they no longer had to read music. It freed them up to be who they were. Yeah. Whether it was Jimi yeah. Hendrix or Stephen Steve Miller or Glenn Campbell was one of the greatest guitar players that ever lived. Yeah. 
you know. Stevie, Wa- Stevie Wonder couldn't read music. <laughs> <laughs> and they had those bump ball. cards, little bumps on the cards. Hmm. i never forget the time that Stevie Wonder called me at the radio station uh, during a break here in New York and said, hey, Alex, uh, uh, why don't you uh, meet me outside after the show and I'll take you for a ride. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Getting ready to drive over right now. He loves to, love to do stuff <laughs> like that. The last time I ever saw him, I was at a party, and he walked in, and he walked right by me. And later on in the evening, I sidled up to him, and I said, uh, uh, Stevie, he says, who's that? I said, Alex. Oh, he says, Alex, how are you? I said, well, now you're nice to me, but, you know, you're such a big star now. You walked in, you hardly noticed me. <laughs> <clears throat> he loved stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. He actually used to take cars out into a parking lot at night that was empty and get behind the wheel of the car and drive. Drive by barrel, the dots on the road. Well, I mean, he you know, would have somebody tell him where he was and turn left here and do this. But, you know, he wasn't about ready to let his blindness stop him from anything. I know a lot of people that can see drive like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But I would imagine that, driving that way. I would imagine that yeah, Stevie Wonder couldn't read music. But listen to all the great music he created. Yeah. You know? And you say, well, how do these people uh, how do these people write music if they can't read it? Well, you they 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 they, they do it and then they have somebody else write it down. Yeah. On on a, on a, on a page. It's all so, about the ear. It's all about the ear. Uh, t- talent many times can be constrained by being taught mm-hmm. that talent. Uh, and what you have to do, I mean, like, for instance, nobody taught me radio. I mean, when I went to school, I took a class in radio at San Francisco City College. Um, but uh, it wasn't, you know, uh, I, 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 I didn't learn anything there. Where I learned was by working at radio stations and just trying what I tried. And the reason why I did okay in this business is because I was so different because I didn't abide by any rules of the road. Mm -hmm. And that's what I I think you have to do. I mean, yes, something like an instrument, you have to teach somebody how to play it, although they could pick it up and learn it on their own if they really have the ability. But there's a point at which you just tell them, look, throw all the rules out the window and just, you know, go at your own speed and at what you believe is the right way to do it. And uh, that's the way you come up with something new. You don't come up with something new by doing something somebody's already done. Yeah. Anyway, so much for that for a guy who had no success really at all. So, you know. (laughs) They have have a funny meme and it has like Freddie Mercury Mm-hmm. And it says, uh, he wrote his old songs, he did all the music for it, he did this, he did this, he did this, you know. And then they show, like, I think it was Beyonce or somebody else, and it said, like, you know, she had five writers, or maybe Celine Dion, five writers, and, you know, all these producers, and all these people, and all these people, you know, just showing how, you know, these rock and roll stars back then, they did everything, and now they have all these writers that write the songs for them, produce the songs for yeah. them, and do all the music for them, where these guys did all the instruments and everything. Oh, the old days, in the very first days of rock and roll, they used to go into a garage, throw a microphone over the beam uh, in the garage, and then record a song and send it off to a company and see if they'd want to release it, you know? No. Today, it's all manufactured. I don't care what you say. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, even Taylor. Yeah, you'd Sw- be surprised how many or, or who writes people's songs when you really read the read the the credits. Yeah. yeah, you'd be surprised. Yeah, who writes whose songs? Well, there's a, if you get the chance to see it, the movie about the Wrecking Crew is around, and these are guys who played on almost everything. I mean, you thought that the Beach Boy Boys played their instruments? No, the, it was the Wrecking Crew. They then learned how to play it when they went out on the road, you know. So, uh, it, it, you know, uh, it, 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 in those days, not everybody was as they seemed to be, okay? Uh, and uh, the Wrecking Crew backed everybody from the Beach Boys to Frank Sinatra to Phil Spector and all of his yeah. records. 
to, uh, you know, mm. somebody else who might be a big, uh, you know, Nat Cole. You know, I mean, it's just amazing. Just amazing. Yeah. <clears throat> but today, music's a whole different thing. Music is purely manufactured today. Yep. You know, lay down this track, lay down that track. What happens Send me with, that one. What happens Send me with, this. What happens with most groups, most singers, is once they release their album and they're going to go out on the road now and do concerts, they have to go back and listen to the album and learn how to play <laughs> the music that they're credited with. Yeah. You know, so not much of anything. How you doing, Tom? We see you occasionally now, you know? Yeah, actually, I came on to mention that uh, you know, I told you before my uh, granddaughter uh, was playing the violin in her middle school, in the middle school orchestra. Yeah. And uh, so she's been at it a couple of years. So I guess she started at 10, 11, something like that. Yeah, that's a good and, time to start. Uh, what's that? That's a good time to start. You know. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and uh, went and saw her uh, fall concert last week. And fantastic. They're, they're doing great. They're, they're great. actually going to, they've actually, uh, uh, done the national anthem at the A's games a couple times, and next year, next spring, they're going to Disneyland. So, <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, you know, I, as I say to any parent out there, I I'd say that to you, Brian. Does Adrian doesn't play anything, does she? Or you're not teaching or anything? No, just that she's doing you know nine classes of dance a week. So. Well, dance, yeah. dance. Yeah, when would okay. she have time? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. No. I try to get her in basketball, but it's like. They practice two days a week, but she's she's dancing. It's three it's the and arts. a half, and, yeah, three and a half and four hours on Monday, uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursdays. Hey, listen, so my, it, it, my schedule. It, it, no, in, yeah. yeah, she dances those three nights, mm -hmm. and my schedule, my work schedule, works around her dance schedule. So right. I'm in Sunnyvale mm -hmm. two days, so I can actually come back home and take her or pick her up. So I, I remind her every day. It's the arts, and that's what. That's what counts nowadays is the arts is yes. a big deal. Yeah. It needs well, to be a big deal. Well, I've been pushing that hard at the high school. Of course here. it needs to be a big deal. And I think that it's very it's good. It's always been pushed back. And and she yeah. doesn't need to learn an instrument. The, the dancing yeah. thing is enough. You know, that's special in and of itself. And, she and then the junior learn. high, they have a dance team, but she may still be at the studio. And then even the high school has a dance team. But I... Do you want to do some basketball too? Because her height, she's got to take advantage of that. You know, I, I just I want to she's, do some she is getting or something tall. for she, her college. You know, to get into yeah. college. You know? She is getting tall, isn't she? Yes. Yeah. Dance will get her in there. Get her on the field. Well, you're tall, but too. you're you're tall. Yeah. How, how tall yeah. are you? Six four. Six four. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. Six, five. My hair. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I'm six four, and she, yeah, no, she's she's uh, she's definitely tall. She hangs out with all the fourth graders, so yeah. But I remember her when she looked small, you know. Yeah, but even then she was taller than others in her age group. Yeah, yeah. When she was uh, in daycare, she was going from the three year old class to the four year old class, and there's a picture of her, and she's looking down at the kids talking to them. <laughs> yeah, they go in spurts. They'll go up. Well, is there any? Stop, is there any? And they'll go up. Is yeah. there is there any um, idea of how tall she will wind up being? No, but every time we went to the doctor, they do that chart, and she's she's in the ninety eight percentile, so she's taller than ninety eight percent of the kids her age. That's good. Okay, but that that only has to be a couple of inches taller, right? Yeah, hmm. but just more than a couple of inches. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, how tall is she now? I don't know. She's I don't know. She's here. <laughs> okay. Six four. But I, you don't, but you don't stick everybody against the wall and put lines on the wall in there somewhere. Yeah, we uh, okay. don't get me started. So we have <laughs> a pole. We have a pole in the garage that yeah. we've been since we moved here, like seven years. Yeah. And then my stupid painter, I told him, don't oh, no. paint over this. Oh no! Right. Fair and... enough, man. I came back and they shot oh. everything. I was so oh. mad. And Tiffany's like, oh, don't worry about it. I said, oh. You don't understand. So that sucks. Yeah. Yeah. I kept taking pictures of mine in case that happened. Yeah. Well, I think I, you guys saw the pictures tonight. So I didn't see them. There's uh So this this is Adrian when she's five days old, getting oh, a wow. bath in the bowl. Yeah. Yep. 
And then that's her, like, uh, I have every year, but I, I can't find where they are. That's like three or four years old. Mm -hmm. And then I got, I have now. She's wearing it on her head. <laughs> yeah. This is from her, like, last year. And that was her tonight in the same bowl. <laughs> <laughs> At least she's laughing. The year last year, she was not happy. She no, seemed man. like really she, down. She looks, but she looks quite adult for her age. Yeah. You know, my mute. Yeah, she's gonna be. I'm gonna be doing that till she dies. Yeah. Or no, sorry, till I die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's stuck with doing that until I die. Every year, her birthday, she's got to do that. Are you gonna have her sit in the cup? Yeah, you think so? <laughs> Good luck with that. She was actually. <laughs> She was eight years so far. It's good. Jeff, yeah, well, Jeff's guy's hand. So, yeah, one of my uh, granddaughters is an athlete, and and she wakes up at four thirty, four o'clock in the morning, and she knocks out with balls. She goes through like fifty-five balls and whacks them mm -hmm. in the first thing in the morning. <laughs> wow. Just to keep her exercise. Oh, that's incredible. And and she's talking to all kinds of colleges mm. who like said, well, we'd like you to come over here and just talk to us and see what's going on and how you've been playing and this and that and the other thing. They think she's going to be somebody who's going to go to college with uh, an education based upon sports. Well, good. Yeah, yeah, so what you want. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what I say too. You know, you use that for sports or for, for getting into school is great. You know, for trying to make pro and all that stuff. Yeah, there have been some arguments about that though. That some for instance college It's hard. Some yeah. of some colleges uh, have been doing this whole thing where they you know, they have these people, these kids come to their school and they let them right in and pay the tuition and all of that because mm -hmm. they're good at football. Meanwhile, they're pushing aside people who really, the education would make them very important people in our society, but they can't get it because they, they're making all the room for the, for, the, uh, for the players because they bring the money into the college. Mm. And there's a whole thing on 60 Minutes about this in which it's just, yeah. It, it, people, some people are just really grieved over the fact. One girl said, I had this grade point average and this and that and everything, and then I went to this school and I couldn't get in because they were making room for all the uh, legacy people, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and, oh, and, and, yeah. and 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 this has been a real problem lately, you know? So I think, you, I think a kid has to work on both. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and any kid who's a good athlete, realize come on who is going to become a professional yeah. athlete one out of what yeah well, also, also look how much it costs to go to college i mean ask yep. brian brian will tell you <laughs> i mean kevin excuse me <laughs> kevin brian will be telling you in a few years uh yeah i'll sell a car for that again you my ain't daughter cheap. had a basketball scholarship oh really so that's and so I, I love yeah. her the best because she saved me all that money. The other two for went to, were were academic, and so I had to pay thousands and thousands of dollars for that to go. Yeah, how about awesome. you, you, Kevin? How much did you have to pay a great deal of your daughter's education, or did she get scholarships? Now my older daughter had... She had the scholarship, and of course she never went to try and go pro or anything yeah. like that. She's a physical therapist now. Uh, but how about you? Yeah. How about you, Perfect. Kevin? Um, yeah, we. We got some scholarships, but nowhere near what covers the bills. Yeah. It's it's yeah. a big bill, yeah. Do you have to go out and yeah. buy, grand, do you have to go out fifty and, plus grand. Do you have to go out and borrow it or do you have it? Uh yeah. both. You know. Yeah. Uh, I, I, we I have good grandfathers and grandmothers. Yeah. <laughs> we do have good grandparents. Yeah. Yeah, so that's how you're major and contributors. And I, to that yeah, business. and I prepared for it too as well. So, luckily, you know, I think there's a there's a big question that's being asked lately about people yeah. going to college at all, whether it's whether it's needed or it's unnecessary. You know, I agree. 
uh, and and uh, that a lot of money is being wasted on people going to college. If you're going to be Tell me about it. well, yeah, I mean, I went into radio, and uh, I went to City College of San Francisco, and then I was going into going to go to San Francisco State, and I decided the hell with it. I was already in radio. What did I need to go to somewhere to study for it? And I did okay. The point is that people. In this idea that you have to go to a college in order to get an education when some of the best education is getting the job you love the kind of job yeah. you love whether it's in radio or whether it's being a musician with a band or or whatever any number of things the internet just get getting doing shows on the internet and making money off a podcast which some mm. kids out there are doing very nicely by okay um, why what do you need college for Maybe you need college for, you know, being a doctor. But then again, shouldn't being a doctor send you to a trade school? And mentorship is big. So I had a mentor when I was yeah. in high school, and I worked mm -hmm. for Spectra Physics my junior, senior summer, mm -hmm. and then I worked at Hill Hill Packard on my, my senior year in high school. And I had a mentor, and that's what pushed me and got me every, it got a lot of chances for Did me. Did you have a college education? Nope. See? And you're doing well, aren't you? I'm, yeah, it's very rare. Neither did uh, I, and I, I did fine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and yeah. I, I, but I also worked my ass off. I mean, exactly. That, there's that. No, there is a difference. I mean, you, the difference is, you know, I I saw around me. Mm. After I worked my ass off, I saw people walking in and making as much money mm -hmm. as I did, just by having a piece of paper. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I Alan, you walk in Alan? and they say, "Oh, well, you got a college education." You and and they walk in and they got this piece of paper and they can make just as much money as I did over twenty years. They can walk in and make it right now. Yeah, but but it's greatly highly overrated. Highly. Because well, just, I, I don't. It's like, I don't disagree it's with like you there. I, but. I, I I said to my father once. I said, "Well, you know, I'm going to college now," and uh, he said, "Yeah, did you learn anything?" You know, just because you go to school doesn't mean you learned anything. Well, it doesn't mean you don't either. Right. I mean, you do right. learn. Right. You do learn. I mean, if you're, especially if you're going into something like business and you're trying to open a business and learn business practices and things like that, you can learn that on the side. But if you want to know the right way to go right away and, and you know, yeah. take the pass and not go through all the bumps and bruises, you can you can figure out the right way to go if you're in college, you know, go through college, four years of college, you can figure out an easier path than going through the, oh crap, I screwed this up and now I got to regroup and do something. You can tr probably avoid a bunch of those speed bumps, Yeah. you know, but yeah. well, you know, I never, still going to have them. I never hit any of those speed bumps. You know? Right. But, you know, it's, it's a different yeah. It's a different uh, world that you were in, but yeah. someone that's doing that or trying to, you know, open up a corporation or something. Oh, like I don't that. know what I would do today. I don't know how you get into radio or how right. you, you know, how, how you. I, in those days, right? It, it's a whole new world. Yeah, it was just you went into radio stations and begged, you know. I mean, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Tom, uh, do you agree or disagree with me about that? Yeah, I was going to say I, I think that that uh, we definitely, you know. Now, we definitely need more than a high school education. But I would say two years of, of, a, of a community college or an equivalent of, of a, a trade school or apprenticeship. Uh -huh. And that's exactly what, uh, the, what uh, President Biden is arguing for. He thinks that we should have free education up to, I say, 14 uh, years, you know, of, Say so equivalent of, of uh, community college or or, right. or 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 trade school, and and that should be enough for uh, trade school is I think yeah, something well something that's vastly underrated uh, that you know a a trade school will treat tra train you in a trade. In fact, I've mm -hmm. suggested that doctors go to trade schools. I mean, what is it? It's a trade. You know, but it's a, a very skilled trade and one that you need a lot of education for, but it's that nonetheless. Uh, yeah. I, I, I just, like right now, like right now, we need a lot of electricians. <laughs> well, and that's we what really need because, you know, we, we have the, you know, we're trying to electrify the country to, 
reduce our yep. greenhouse gases. We got the uh, uh, Inflation Re Reduction Act caveat, but we don't have the 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 electricians to do the actual installations, to do the actual work. Yeah, and we yet, but, that but, up. but what we what have we done with those kind of professions? We've looked upon, we've looked down on them. The big mistake. I know, yeah, I know, mistake. it's a big mistake. Well, that's that's what I like about the high school down here is they have. They have a CTE, a career training <clears throat> education down here, mm -hmm. and they they set these kids up when they're coming out of middle school and going into high school. And I probably said this before, but they basically have you decide whether you're going on an academic career or a trade career, and they set you on the path from freshman. When you walk in, mm -hmm. you going to college or you going into a trade. Uh -huh. This is the way you're going to go. Set up a path. And if you take one path and, and want you, to trade you, into another yeah. path, you have to opt out and you have to interview your way out of it, the path that you're going into. My daughter picked college mm -hmm. and she worked her way through that. If she wanted to trade, decide to go be a welder, mm -hmm. which they have a beautiful welding shop, they have a beautiful shop, you know, you could be an auto mechanic, you could be whatever. They had mm -hmm. all brand new shops put in the last four or five years. If she wanted to do that, she had to interview her way out of her her academic career and go over there to that path and then sign her way through that. Wow. So it's a yeah. it's a strict way to do it. And it's a public school. Let me let me ask uh, Alan's been quite quiet tonight, which is unusual oh, for you. Alan. Alan? I did. Oh there he is. Are you are you tired tonight? Is that what it is? Alan? Alan. Alex, you're frozen. Oh. You're freezing up a little bit. You're freezing. Alan, you okay? I'm, fre I'm You're freezing up a little bit. Oh, it's, That's it's, why it's, we got it. It's part of what you're saying, Alex. It said something about my internet being down, but uh, I, I, oh, there was some some problem that we had there. Uh, but I think you we're, I think, yeah, we're, oh, we're okay now. I just looked. Did you ask me a question? No, I was asking you a question. Uh, the question was, um, I heard, I, I don't know where I heard it, or who I heard it from, one of these snitches here told me, that you, <laughs> your, your mother and father were doctors? Yeah. No? no yeah. I don't. Who, who, who are you asking? You. You. Alan. you. Oh. Asking. No? He has My a degree in microbiology. Yeah. Alan, Alan, Alan does. Uh, microbiology? Yeah, my father had a, an electrical engineering degree, a doctorate. Okay. And and my mother was a realtor, a businesswoman. Hmm. Right. My and father was. A what doctor. did the, What did they say when you decided to become a cop? <laughs> uh, well, you know, I first started. If I was in microbiology and I was taking biology at the same time, they thought I was going to go to Stanford and go into. I wanted to go into emergency medicine because it looked like you know exciting and boom, boom, boom. And when I became a cop, they weren't too happy. <laughs> <laughs> but the excitement was there. Obviously, the money wasn't the same. and But the schooling wasn't the same either. I mean, I went to six months to a police academy and, you know, some training afterwards. And there you are. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, as a doctor, I would have been in school for, you know, 10 years or something like that. Do you so. think we should maybe take a little longer time to teach somebody who carries a gun? <laughs> well, I, you know, the cops aren't, aren't aren't going out killing all these people, so. No, uh, I guess not. You know, you know. They're, they're, not the, they're not the active shooters as a rule, so. Um, oh, but, by the way, I, I did you notice that today Joe Biden... Uh, in fact, he sent our Secretary of State right. over to Israel to say, hey, why don't you pause for a while here? You know, let these people get their medicine, let, you know, get, let them get out if they need to get out, you know. Uh, but pause because, and, and I was saying, when, when's Biden going to do something about this? Because this is getting a little, it was getting a little extreme. I mean, when you go and you kill 12 members of Hamas, but to do so, you kill like 2,000 people in the building that you had to bomb. It's a little disproportionate, you know? Um, and, and I think Biden came to that conclusion, too. Mm -hmm. You know, so we'll see what happens over there. But, boy, it's just, it's always grim news from that part of the world now. I mean, I, really I grim. Think, I think this is going to hurt Biden by not intervening more. 
I mean, I, I hurt Biden in the election. Well, I think Biden doesn't, I think because there is an election, I don't think he knows exactly how to react. I think no, if, I, if he didn't have another election to face, I think he'd be handling this much more aggressively no, and say, no. look, you know, you're not, by killing that many people, do you know so far, you know how many Palestinians have been killed in Gaza? Over 8,000. 9,000. You know how many of them are children? 3,500. Wow. They say I heard 22,000 today, so the numbers are all skewed. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'll take the low number and still say yeah. it's terrible. Bad, okay. Right. Bad enough. Yeah. So, I mean, but at least it was nice to see that he was doing something. But during an election period, which is every year of every election now, uh, uh, you know, you, you're very careful about what you do. Because if, if, if he does that, people are going to say, oh, you're pro-Palestinian? And if he doesn't, so. they're going to say, what are you, pro-Israel? I mean, you don't, yeah. you can't win for losing. You can't just well, do what needs to be. pro-Israel. The country has always backed Israel. But... Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he's asked them to slow down, and how about try a ceasefire to allow... No, he, they, he, he didn't say ceasefire, he said a pause. Yeah. Oh, okay, pause. You know, uh, and, and uh, I think it should be a pause to rethink the whole thing and how you're doing it. See, I don't, I don't trust Netanyahu, okay? I no, think, neither I, do uh, I. I think he's... Nobody does. I think yeah, he's... He, there you go. The three Jews on the show don't trust. Well, I think him, so. he's as bad as any dictator. Yeah. You know, it's the closest thing that Israel has ever had to a dictator. Okay, and uh, uh, I would prefer to see more restraint in this kind of situation rather than hostility. That doesn't help anything. So, yeah. you know, unfortunately, I, I have a different attitude than, than what, you might. What, what's your attitude? Well. Forget about the fact that the president there is an asshole. I agree that. <laughs> okay, one. all right. Okay, no doubt about that. And the but, prime minister. Right, the prime minister. But anyway, I think there's, there was a whole bunch of people who decided. What, what happened? Did he freeze for, up now? What's for that? two years. Yeah. That they came over and they killed a bunch of. Uh, Israelis. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they figured out that they were going to do it effectively, or they would just kill as many as they could. Well, look, but, but, but those uh, people are still there. A lot of them. Yes, yeah. but how many people do you kill to get to those people? In other I, words, I, you know, probably more than you have to. But see, I there don't is agree a, with that. a certain number that still needs to be done. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Something I don't think. I don't think that's oh, that's time to stop. Alan, quickly, I'm running out yeah, of time. It's not only the people they killed. The, a lot of people that got hit in Israel are injured permanently and, and yeah. or temporarily. Yeah. So it's not just killed. <clears throat> and traumatized. Those kids, those and babies, the kids that they're picking out just crying and stuff. Absolutely. Yeah, but then how, about, how about the kids, kids who are, who, how about the kids kids who are crying in, in, on the other side? I mean, it is just, it, it is a horrible... Uh, as we call it, shit show on both sides, and it, it's got it's somewhere. Uh, somebody's got to come in there, like the guy taking two bullies in the play yard and getting them to stop fighting, and just yeah. say, "Hey, put this on pause for a second, and let's rethink this." And I know that Hamas can't be dealt with, but let's at least deal with the civilians who are innocents in this whole in this whole thing. I on both sides. Hamas on would, both sides. Hamas would show good faith by releasing the hostages. I don't know about that. I don't I don't trust Hamas any more than I trust Netanyahu. Well, I don't trust them either, but yeah. I think that, that might slow yeah. the Israelis down. Anyway, hey, that's it for tonight. God, good seeing mm. you again, Tom. Always good to have you here. It's always a pleasure when I see your shining countenance in our mix. <laughs> uh, also thank you to Jeff. And because you disagreed with me tonight, I don't ever want to have dinner with you ever again. Okay. <laughs> Finally, you see the real Jeff. Yeah. No, you see the yeah, real Alex. Yeah. <laughs> Charlie, thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Brian. I appreciate it. And, and Alan, oh, always a pleasure. Every one of you, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. There they go, folks. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Uh, Jack Bishop is next with The Intersection. He'll be here uh, in just a few minutes and be taking your calls 
at, at uh, let's see here, uh, at Gabnet Live on Skype. Gabnet Live on Skype. I'll see you tomorrow night. Same time. Same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? And say happy birthday. Happy birthday.